Hey guys, it's me, Seren, back to another video. So today is Wednesday, it is the other Wednesday, which makes today Hidden Figures Day. Um, today's hidden figure is Sadie Tanner Mossel Alexander. She's also known as Sadie T.M. Alexander, who was the first African-American woman to receive a PhD in economics in the United States. And she was also the first woman to receive a law degree from the University of Pennsylvania Law School. She was the first African-American woman to practice law in Pennsylvania. And she was the first national president of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority, which I know a lot of you guys are Deltas, so you guys probably already know who this woman is, for those of you that are Deltas, um, and for those of you that are from Pennsylvania probably already know, but I didn't know, so. Uh, in 1946, she was appointed to the President's Committee on Civil Rights, established by Harry Truman, and she was the first African-American woman appointed as Assistant City Solicitor for the City of Philadelphia. Uh, she and her husband were both very, very active in civil rights. She was a lawyer, she was an academic, she was an activist, uh, she had tons and tons and tons and tons of firsts, um, and in 1952, she was appointed to Philadelphia's uh, Commission on Human Relations, which she served on through 1968. She was also president of John F. Kennedy's Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights Under Law, so a lot of the the legal groundwork for the civil rights movement, a lot of it was set by Sater, excuse me, by Sadie T. M. Alexander. So I'm going to read you guys uh, just a little bit about her. She was born Sadie Tanner Mossel on January 2nd, 1898 in Philadelphia. She attended high school in Washington, D.C. at the M Street School, now known as Dunbar High School. Dunbar, woo woo, my grandma went to Dunbar. Graduating in 1915, Mossel returned to Philadelphia to study at the School of Education at the University of Pennsylvania, graduating in 1918. She pursued graduate work in economics, also at Penn, earning her master's in 1919 despite racist and and despite racism and sexism conspiring against her, excuse me guys, awarded the Francis Sargent Pepper Fellowship, she was able to continue her studies and in 1921 became the second African American woman in the United States to earn a PhD. Finding it difficult to get work in Philadelphia, Mossel worked for the black-owned North Carolina Mutual Life Insurance Company in Durham, North Carolina for two years. In 1923, Mossel married Raymond Pace. Is it Mossel or Mosel? Anyone that's familiar, let me know. I think it's Mossel. Mossel married Raymond Pace Alexander, returned with, him, returned with him to Philadelphia, and entered law school. She was the first African-American woman admitted to the University of Pennsylvania Law School, and in 1927, she was its first African-American woman graduate and the first to be admitted to the Pennsylvania Bar. Mossel Alexander practiced law from 1927 until her retirement in 1982. Upon admission to the bar, she joined her husband's law practice, specializing in estate and family law, and they both were active in civil rights law as well. In 1928, she was the first African-American woman appointed as assistant city solicitor for the city of Pennsylvania, serving until 1930, and she was reappointed from 1934 to 1938. From 1943 to 1947, she was the first woman to serve as secretary of the National Bar Association. Not just the first black woman, the first woman, period, to serve as secretary of the National Bar Association. But yet, you don't see the white feminists talking about Sadie Tanner Mossel, do you? She was appointed to the Commission on Human Relations of the City of Philadelphia, serving from 1952 to 1968, and in 1959, when her husband was appointed to the Court of Common Pleas in Philadelphia, she continued to practice law and especially civil rights law on her own. In 1976, she joined the firm of Atkinson, Myers, and Archie as a general counsel, where she stayed until her retirement. Mossel Alexander died on November 1st, 1989, at Cathedral Village in Philadelphia from pneumonia. She was buried in West Laurel Hill Cemetery. And uh, I want to read you guys a little bit about her views. Alexander's opposition to racial oppression was within a black radical tradition of 19th century scholars Frederick Douglass and T. Thomas Fortune and with later scholars W.E.B. Du Bois and A. Philip Randolph. Alexander's focus was frequently on racial and economic justice for the working class, especially for working men and women. However, unlike Dubois or Randolph, Alexander never embraced socialism. Alexander also can be contrasted with Howard University radicals Ralph Bunch E. Frank and E. Franklin 
Frazier, and fellow Black economist Abram Harris. For example, Harris wrote that the fundamental problems facing Blacks could be overcome through multiracial labor organizing. Alexander, on the other hand, was outspoken against white dominance in political, social, and economic spheres. So she was not one of those, we have to hold hands and stand together in solidarity types. She was like, I'm not with this white people being the head of everything type shit. Like, I'm not with it. I'm not with it. It doesn't work for me. Alexander's work and views are recorded in speeches kept in the University of Pennsylvania archives. Among her earliest works are from the 1920s and discuss black workers in the U.S. economy. In 1930, Alexander published an article, Negro Women, excuse me, rubbing my eye, it's just, <laughs> in our economic life, which was published in the Urban League's Opportunity Magazine advocating for black women's employment, particularly in industrial jobs. Um... Alexander generally supported the Republican Party, suspicious of the control of conservative, of conservative Southern whites. She did not trust white people, soul sister, over the Democratic Party, although she also criticized Republican political appointments as well as what she saw as uneven benefits of the New Deal, which did not do enough to help blacks who were most hurt by the Great Depression. And here we are in 2017, and we're seeing the same we're really caught in like the same vicious cycle, right? Talking about, oh my God, the poor white working class, right? The whole point of the New Deal was to like help help out the white working class, even though black people were the ones who were hurt most by the Great Depression. And the New Deal left out black people. So all this talk about like the white working class and the white working class and poor white working class and help poor white people that are overdosing on opioids and Appalachia and shit. It's like, no, but black people are always the ones that are hit hardest. We were hit hardest by the Great Depression. We were hit hardest by the Great Recession. We make up like the bulk of the poor and the working class. So what is all this shit about the white working class? All that means is that when the new New Deal comes along, they get to leave black people out again because we are already have framed this narrative of the white working class and poor white people, right? Here we are a hundred years later, still doing the same shit. You understand? Keep going. During World War II, Alexander saw similarities in a rise in racial violence and discrimination in the U.S. as, as paralleling the treatment of Jews in Germany. Near the end of the war, she supported integrating labor unions to increase their bargaining power once the war economy slowed and industrial employment moved toward pre-war levels. Her interest in labor economic issues extended to advocating of government regulation to smooth fluctuations in the business cycle, modification of tariffs, regulation of public utilities, and regulation of securities and securities markets. After the war, she was appointed to Truman's Presidential Committee on Human Rights and shifted her focus to civil and human rights. Evidence in the Pennsylvania archives suggests that her main focus was in this direction for over a decade. In 1963, she gave a speech to the Annual Conference of Commission on Human Rights and she returned to the topic of economic justice advocating for universal employment. This is in 1963 and here we are in 2017, still talking about these same ideas and these same concepts. In 1948, the National Urban League featured Alexander as Woman of the Year in its comic book of Negro Heroes. In 1974, Alexander was awarded an honorary doctorate by the University of Pennsylvania, her first of seven such honors. An elementary school in West Philadelphia is named after her, and the Raymond Pace and Sadie Tanner Mossel Alexander professional professorship at the University of Pennsylvania is named in her honor. And I'm going to read you guys a quote. I knew well that the only way I could get that door open was to knock it down. So I knocked all of them down. Sadie Tanner Mossel Alexander, a hidden figure. Hopefully you guys are having a great week. Hopefully you guys are having a great month. Um, you guys have been really, really active in the comment section, and I really, really appreciate that. But you guys, for the most part, have been keeping it super civil, which I really appreciate. Um, and yeah, food for thought as always. Of course, there will be links in the description box if you want to read more about this amazing, amazing, amazing hidden figure. And and I just feel like do it, especially talking about these, you know, kind of older um, historical figures, you know, going back in time. It really does like keep striking me over and over and over how we're just like. 
still talking about these same issues that like black women have been talking about for so long now. And it's like, maybe if they were not hidden figures, maybe if we actually listened to them and studied their work, we would not be in this fucking predicament, in this fucking situation that we consistently find ourselves in over and over and over and over and over again in these fucking United States. But what do I know? Sadie, Tanner, Mossel, Alexander, a hidden figure, food for that as always. See you guys next time. Peace.